Coding. Made easy. So what's up everybody, this is Peter coming to you with your next Java Made Easy tutorial. And in this tutorial, we are going to be learning about something called switch statements. So in the last couple tutorials, we learned about how to help the computer make decisions. And we're going to be learning about another method on how to do so. Okay, so the we're, the reason why I always erase some, the, everything and put it back is because I want you guys to get in the habit of... I'll retype everything so you guys can get a gist of how uh, you guys can memorize these basic things. So we have our scanner and we're going to call it user input and we're going to say new scanner and system dot n. And we already know what this does. It allows us to actually get an user input. Now let's say we have uh let's say we have a, a main menu uh, in our game okay so let's just say system dot out dot dot print line and we're gonna say um one equals new game and uh oh you know what and we're gonna use a uh, backslash n and backslash n uh is an is in the escape character sorry and i'm going to be teaching more about these but um this will just create a brand new line and we're going to say to load game and we're going to put a backslash n and we'll say three options backslash n for credits and uh and let me just put this here and just to show you when we run this and put this down here it puts it in the list like here so we want the op we want the player to choose an option right so based on what we've learned in the last tutorial or the last couple of tutorials this should be relatively easy so we're, we're just gonna say okay int um, selection and you want to get in the habit of naming your variables um, something relevant to what you're, you're doing. So it's kind of self-explanatory. And we'll say next int. And so uh, what we're going to do, uh, we're just going to say, okay, if selection is uh, equal to 1, then we're going to say, okay, system out print line. And we're gonna say you. We're gonna just you chose new game. And we're just gonna do a bunch of else ifs. So I'm just gonna copy this. So we're gonna say else if. If the selection is equal to two, then we're gonna say load game. And else if the selection is equal to three, then they chose options. And we're just gonna have an else because if it's not one, two, or three, then it has to be four. And so we're gonna say you chose credits. And yeah, they can enter a number like zero, one, or we could put it like 10 or whatever. And if you wanted to, you could say, okay, they have to enter a number within these boundaries. But um, we'll get into that stuff a bit later. So uh, if we run this program and uh, we put in the number one, it says you chose new game. And if we put in the number three, it says you chose options and so on and so forth. And it works correctly. and. And nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong with doing your code this way. But what if I told you that in, in a scenario like this, when you have listed things like like so, uh, what if I told you there was a more efficient way to do it? Well, we have something called switch statements. And this is the syntax for it. So we do switch, and we're, this is the variable we're checking against. So we're... The one thing that is common in all of these else is that we're checking for this selection variable. And so what we're going to do is we say switch selection. So what this is saying, it says, okay, check selection. Then we, we put the curly braces, then we put the value case, 
and then whatever value we're checking for. So I'm gonna say case one. So if selection is equal to one, then you put this. Then we put the keyword break. Then we say, okay, case. Okay, if the value is two, then it's gonna say new game. And we put break. And I'll, I'll explain break in just a second. And we'll say, okay, it's selection three. If it is three, then do that. And we're gonna say case four, like so. And what we will do is there's another special thing that you can do. So just like with the ifs and else ifs, um, there is uh, there's an else in case none of these options are true. Well, in switch statements, they have that as well. So they have something called default. So if none of these options, so if selection is not equal to one, two, three, or four, then it calls default. Then it goes to default, and we'll just say uh, I will say something like number not in range or something like that, and we'll put a break. So what does break mean? Well, break basically means okay. Um, in this particular, it, what it does is it breaks out of the current brace. So what's gonna happen, it's gonna say, okay, selection. Um, is selection one, is, let's say selection is equal to one, it's gonna say, okay, selection is equal to one. We're gonna say, choose new game. Now, it doesn't need to check if it's two, if it's three, if it's four, or default, we already found it. And we use this keyword break, and what break is gonna do is it's gonna it's gonna stop checking for all of these, and it's gonna get outside the switch statement and continue the code outside the switch statement. So it kind of works the same way as if and else if, and that if if it finds the answer, break will cancel it, will get out of the switch statement, and then start the code after it. So if we were to run this program, we'll get the same results as before. So we'll click play and we'll go down here and we'll say the value one and says you chose new game we're gonna run this one more time let's say two you chose load game and so on and so forth so with switch statements you can do the exact uh, same thing with the if statements but it is, it is a lot cleaner so if you're checking if you're doing if statements and you're checking against one variable for explicit values like this one two three four and yada 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 then it, it is most times more efficient to use a switch statement rather than an else if or an if statement. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And bye for now.